Q&A time. My gosh, that light has made my room blindingly bright, but we're just gonna roll with it. So as you guys know, my last video, I asked you guys to ask me a bunch of questions about my trip, and uh, you guys have done such, and I will answer as such. So I'm just gonna jump right into it here. Question numero uno is from Mr. Torres. He asks, how do you look for hostels, locations, prices, etc.?" Thank you, Mr. Torres. So, how I do that, pretty simple. I honestly, I have an app on my phone called Hostel World. If you don't have it, you should have it. A Hostel World basically compiles all the hostels in a city and you can see them by map. So if you click the map, they're all in one area. Like they're, they're all together always. So what I'll do, I'll just go there and I will walk around. I'll walk into the hostel that I want to go to that I see on Hostel World. I'll ask they have space. If they do, that's great. If they don't, I move on to the next one. Okay, by the same guy, another question. Um, how did you take care of your techie stuff? So this is a question I had a lot before I left. So what I did basically was I locked it in the hostel. Every hostel we stayed at, I was scared to be kind of sketchy and or I wouldn't want to leave my stuff there. And that's not the case. I didn't stay at a single hostel where I felt uncomfortable leaving my stuff. So basically, as long as you lock your stuff up, you'll be good to go. You should be good to go. And I'd say there's only like two or three hostels throughout the entire trip that didn't have lockers. And in a case like that, I had a bag lock and I just locked my backpack up through the zippers, leave my stuff in the, in the bag. So everything worked out for me. And honestly, I didn't hear any stories of anything being stolen. So. You should be okay. Can you teach me your color grading techniques? No. I'm sorry guys, so many people ask me to do this and it's, I just, I don't know, I can't. It, it makes my videos unique and it's not like it's a super secret or anything. It's just something that, I don't know, I just don't wanna share really, honestly, that's the reason. If you can totally YouTube it, I figured out through YouTube, Google, and just searching. It's not hard to figure out, I just don't wanna release it. I'm sorry, I hope you understand, but it's just what I feel a unique aspect of my videos. Jambun Films says, why did you leave the Philippines? Because my 30 day visa was up and I had to leave. I wouldn't have left otherwise. Aaron says, where is the next place you plan to go? Ever thought about Norway? Well, now I'm thinking about Norway. It's happened so many times. People say something and then it's just like, wow, I, I should go there. So Norway one day maybe. And uh, the question of the next place I plan to go, My dudes, we just decided to book a flight. We just bought tickets to Iceland. So, um, the 29th of May, so 28, 27 days. Iceland. Mr. Brian asks, what are the top five things you think every traveler slash backpacker needs to bring with them? Um, I'm gonna fire these off. Camera, cell phone, power bank, a power brick, like a bar, like something like that that you're able to plug the previous three items I named in. A good travel towel. That's one thing I missed was just having a nice towel. The one I brought wasn't that great. It felt like a microfiber cloth on my body and it was always nice and refreshing to have a good towel. So I would say a nice towel. From James Farrell. Hey James, what is the best spot or one place that you have visited and what was the hardest part about being away from home? Two very good questions. I really like Sapa in Vietnam. I really loved Sapa. Um, I'm gonna give you three. Koh Lanta in Thailand, I absolutely love that place. And um, maybe Port Barton in the Philippines. Those are three, I know I kinda cheated, but I love those three places. Don't get me wrong, there are so many more, but those are just off the top of my head. Hardest part about being away from home? I'd say missing all my friends and family. I Like being at home is great, and having my own bed is great, having a hot shower is awesome, but I can live without that stuff, I really don't need it. But for me, something personal is my friends and family. If I don't have those, I'm Noah. I'm not, I'm not Noah. I need my friends and family. Mr. Joshua, how was your experience here in the Philippines? I said it already, but the Philippines was my favorite country by far. I loved the Philippines. It was, so I guess answering your question, how was my experience? Amazing. Da, 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 da. <laughs> How much are toasties from 7-Eleven that you love so much? I love, and that's asked by Ray. I love toasties so much, so much. 
They are uh, roughly one Canadian dollar, 25 Thai baht. Lisette asks, what do you recommend as a budget for four months? I talked about this, I touched on this in a video previously, but I budgeted myself 50 Canadian dollars a day. And you can do the conversion to whatever currency you want on that. But that was a pretty safe ballpark estimate to be in. I went over some days, I went under other days. Are there any big differences between the spending in each country? Yes and no. Yes, in terms of accommodation is cheaper, for example, in Thailand than the Philippines generally. And then transportation is cheaper in Vietnam than it is in Thailand. So it's, you give and you take in each country. Some things are more expensive, some things are less expensive. All of the countries together are cheap. Clearly I did it on $50 a day and I was great. Um, hey Noah, do you reckon Laos is worth visiting after you've been there by Jules? He, oh, he also tacks on that I spent the least amount of time there. Yes, I spent the least amount of time in Laos. I wish I had spent more. It's actually one of those places that everyone says you should, you should explore before it comes very popular. Um, it's home to Vang Vien, which was an amazingly fun time. Uh, it's also home to Kuang Sea Falls in Luang Prabang, the most beautiful waterfall I have ever seen, and uh, various other things. It's just a very cool place. I would love to go up north more and do some of the motorbike loops around there. I didn't get the chance this trip. I'll be back eventually. Yes, it's worth going to. Final question, I'm gonna leave it on this, or I guess, okay, this is this comment's a three-part question. It is from Relax Carpe Diem. What was your general budget slash ways to minimize withdrawal fees from ATM? So, like I said, general budget, about 50 Canadian a day. Uh, ways to minimize ATM fees, those hurt a lot. I know that I was getting charged like 12, 13, 14, 15, upwards of there. Um, Canadian dollars every time I just took my money out. Some ways to minimize that cost because you definitely can. One is that you go to your bank and ask if they have any plans. Um, one thing that my bank offered was if I keep my checking account balance above a certain amount, I'm able to withdraw money and they won't charge me on the bank's end. So I got reimbursed for that, which is very good. Um, if you're in Canada, I'm with TD Canada Trust. Another thing you can do that helps so much is whenever you hit up the ATM, you take out the max amount you're allowed. So for example, in Thailand, the max amount is 10,000 baht usually. You take out 10,000 at once because then you have to hit it up less frequently. How easy is it getting around from each country slash island to island? In the Philippines, that was the hardest to travel, but it's not necessarily hard. It's just, it just takes a bit more planning. Um, the other countries, dead easy, like not even a day in advance. You can go in the morning and then have a night bus take you from Laos to Vietnam, from Thailand to Laos. So easy to get in anywhere. Bus, train, no problem. Um, looking back, what's one thing that you would have done differently? Honestly, I, I'm just saying this from my heart, there's not much that I would have done differently. I, The way the trip panned out, the way everything went, I had, I've told you guys, I loved my time there and there's honestly not much I would have changed. What I can say to that is that you guys should not be looking to change your trip. I am such a big advocate and the trip just taught me this more. Just go with the flow. My best memories, the things that I still think about today, are just random things that happen out of nowhere. Like, they can't be planned, you could never plan them. It just happen. Like, I was on Koracha Island, a tractor came by, I jumped on the tractor and it took me to a random beach at the back of the island by myself that was so serene. Um, <laughs> in the Philippines, I sat down beside Nick and Marie with a beer and I traveled with them for 30 days. There's just so many random things that I can never plan and I wouldn't want to change just because the way everything worked out. It's the butterfly effect. A butterfly flaps its wings and suddenly there's a tornado. It just, little things add up and it made for an amazing trip. So thank you guys all so much for watching. Thank you for tuning into my trip and listening to me for the past four months. I really hope I've been able to provide you guys with some sort of entertainment and or just the ability to travel and the, the courage to feel safe and tips and tricks and stuff like that. You guys are the best. I, I appreciate you guys so much. Thank you all so much for watching. I love you guys. See you in another one.